Hey everybody, God bless you. Hey, today I want to talk to you about the fact that you can change your thinking and you can actually think God thoughts. Wow, wouldn't that be amazing? You can think like God. You know, your thoughts, the Bible says, as a man thinks, so he is. So your thoughts actually turn into words, which turn into actions, which turns into a lifestyle, and which turns into your destiny. So it all starts with your thinking. Where's your mind going? And so I want to challenge you today to think about what you're thinking about. And I want to show you how you and I can think God thoughts. We can think like God. So uh, first off, I want to just pray, and then I want to introduce you to the three different kinds of thinking. And so, by the way, if you haven't already done this, I have a YouTube channel under my name, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. If you haven't gone there, I have over 360 videos there that will help you in your Christian life. When you get there, become a subscriber, click the bell, and click like, and then we can get the videos out to more and more people. All right, so thinking God thoughts. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you don't just want to save us so we can go to heaven. You want to bring heaven into our life. And so, Lord, I know the way we bring heaven into our life is by thinking the thoughts of God, thinking like you think. So, Lord, your word says, set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on the earth, and then you're going to experience everything that God has for you. God, I pray for everyone listening that they'll get this, Lord. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. Can you say amen to that? All right. Three, there's three kinds of thinking. The first kind of thinking the Bible talks about is demonic thinking. That's right. Demon-driven thinking. James chapter 3 says this, but if you have bitter jealousy, selfish ambition in your hearts, and do not uh, boast uh, but and be false to the truth, this is not wisdom that comes from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. So there is demonic thinking, which is jealousy, selfish ambition, evil that thoughts in your mind. And you can, I'm sure somebody right now saying, yeah, amen, I got, I got that one down. The second kind of thinking uh, the Bible talks about is carnal or fleshly thinking or earthly thinking. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 7 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally or fleshly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity or against God and is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed it can be. So we have demonic thinking, we have fleshly thinking, and then, of course, the third one is spiritual or Holy Spirit thinking. Back to our passage again. Those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded. You see that? So you can be a spiritually minded person. Well, what is a spiritually minded person? It's a person who thinks like God thinks. Now, this, you know, the incredible thing is that when you begin to think like God thinks, that things, there's things that, that bo- used to bother you that aren't going to bother you anymore. There's limitations that are going to come off of your life. Uh, there's peace that's going to come into your heart. There's joy that's going to come into your heart. There's security that you're going to feel. You're not, you're not going to be you know, worried about the future because you're going to begin to think like God thinks. Come on. All right, so let's look at some ways that God thinks. Number one, God thinks according to his word. In Isaiah 55, uh, in the latter part, about, around verse 10 or 11, it says this, So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish what I purpose, and shall succeed for which, in the matter for which I said it. So God thinks from the word of God. Before that, he says, my ways are not your ways, nor are my thoughts your thoughts, says the Lord. And so how do we think God's thoughts? By thinking on the word. This is why the Bible teaches us to meditate on the word day and night. Right. So then you will make your way prosperous and you will have great success. That's Joshua 1.8. So God thinks according to his word. Now, if you never read the Bible, I just met somebody today who said for the very first time in their Christian life, they're reading through the whole Bible. Can I, I, I don't even know how to tell you how important it is for you to read the word, read the word, read the word. 
Because the more you read the word, the more you're going to think the way God thinks. The second way that God thinks is he thinks from an eternal perspective. Most of our thinking is based on a here and now thinking. What's in it for me? What's going to happen today? Well, you know, we don't think from an eternal perspective. What's going to happen next week? We think from what the Bible calls a temporal or a temporary perspective. But if you're going to think like God, you got to think from an eternal perspective. What I'm thinking about now, how is it affecting me, not just in the here and now, but eternally? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Set your mind on things above, not on things that are on the earth. In Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 6, it says, God raised us up with him to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Why do we need to sit in heavenly places? Because we need to see our lives and think about things from an eternal perspective. You know, your neighbor next door might look like they're doing great. Their kids are doing great. Their finances are doing great. They have all the toys and everything, but they don't know Jesus. So if you're to think about them like, well, my neighbor's okay. They don't need to hear about God. They're they're blessed. Well, that's because you're thinking in a temporal, temporary perspective. If you think about eternity, they need to hear the gospel. They need to hear that God loves them. So God thinks from an eternal perspective. The third way he thinks is that he thinks good thoughts about us, believing the best for us. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, and it talks about this, says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts for peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. So God thinks thoughts of peace. God thinks uh, believing the best about our future. So when you say, God, how are you thinking about me? He says, I'm thinking good things for you. I'm thinking of gr- a great future of you. The fourth thing, way that God thinks, and that is that he thinks victorious winning thoughts, not victim defeatist thoughts. You know, a lot of times our mind goes to the negative rather than the positive, right? We go to what's what's wrong, and I'm a victim, and I'm being defeated. But that's not the way that God thinks. God thinks victorious thoughts. In Joshua which, 1, 8, which I quoted earlier, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Philippians 4.13, listen to Paul writing from prison. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Do you see that Paul was thinking winning thoughts? He was thinking victory thoughts. He wasn't thinking, I'm in this jail, poor me. I've been suffering. I've been beaten so many times and feeling sorry for himself. No, no, no. He's saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The fifth way that God thinks is he thinks positively toward us and has our best interest at heart. Psalms 139 verse 17 and 18 says, how precious are your thoughts toward me, O God, how vast is the sum. Think about this. I want you to think about what you're thinking about. Right now, God is thinking good thoughts about you. He's not thinking, but he's like, I think God's mad at me. I think God doesn't like me. I think God, you know, has it out for me. No, no, no. The Bible says, how precious are your thoughts, O God? How vast is the sum of them? If I could count them, he says, they would be more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, it says this. What can we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The sixth way that God thinks is that God thinks thoughts, uh, God's thoughts are simply thinking about yourself. To, if you're going to think God's thoughts, you simply think about yourself and the world around you the way God thinks about them. So then it comes down to the next thing. How do I change the way I think? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I've been working on this for years. I discovered Romans 12 verse 2. Here's what it says. Paul says here in this passage, he says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now notice this. By the way, the world wants you to think a certain way. It wants you to think victim, that you're a victim. It wants you to think you're defeated. It wants you to think you're ugly. It wants you to think you'll never amount to anything. It wants you to think you're not as good as everybody else is. That's being conformed to this world. 
or I'm a failure. Uh, you know, I always don't, I never do things right. I, I'm always messing up. That is world thinking. And the world wants you to conform. Conform. That's what all the media is about. That's what all, everybody else's life on Facebook is better than your life. The Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewed of your mind. Now, how do you be transformed by the renewed of your mind? You do that by putting the word of God. Your word I have hidden my heart that I might not sin against you, the Bible says in Psalms 119. And so we are to be transformed. It means like, you know, like a, a caterpillar in a cocoon goes in the cocoon and comes out a butterfly. So as you hide the word of God in your heart and your mind, you say, well, I don't understand everything in the word of God. Don't worry about what you don't understand. Just keep reading. There's going to be stuff in there that you will understand. But just let the word come into you because the Bible says the word is powerful, like a two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit, both joints and marrows, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. As we put the word in us, it does several things. It builds our faith. It helps us to know who we are in him. It helps us to know how God thinks about us. We put the word of God in us, and pretty soon, you know what happens? Your life starts being transformed. Your thinking starts being changed to where you go from negative to positive, from defeat to victory, from I'm a victim to I'm a victor. That is God's will for you, for you to think like God thinks. Well, I want to pray for you in closing and ask you that God will begin to help you to think like he thinks. All right? Now, you got to be involved. But listen, as you do that, God's going to help you by his grace and mercy. He wants you to think like he thinks. So I pray right now for you right now, those watching this video, that God will give you the grace to begin to work on how I think, that you will stop and ask the question, what am I thinking about? <clears throat> think about what you're thinking about. And Lord, if it's, not according, if it's not according to the word of God and what God says about them, that they'll cast down those thoughts and imaginations and they'll replace them with God's word and what you say about them. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow, I feel good about this message, right? I know it's encouraging you. Well, hey, again, this is Fred Kropp coming from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. I want you to know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.